Hi everyone, and welcome to episode one. We are starting off with a simple one day build using a downloaded 3D model. Today's subject is Baby Groot, which is a character featured in the upcoming movie Guardians of the Galaxy 2. This model was sculpted in ZBrush by Bayamba and is available for free download at Thingiverse.com. After downloading, you can simply load it into your slicing program of choice and export it for printing. I'm using IdeaMaker. As you can see, this is a very highly detailed model, and it's ready for printing without the need for support material. I'm printing using my Raise 3 d N2 printer using Hatchbox PLA. As you can see, the detail comes right off the printer looking really nice. There's some real subtle horizontal striations where the uh, layers are, but I kind of like that for this. It almost, it almost works. Here you can see a slight issue where there was about a 45 degree overhang and the filament sagged just a little bit. But that's easy to fix using an X-Acto knife. One thing that I didn't show in camera here is that I printed it with the included brim and had to cut that off later. That's why you can kind of see into the, the grid work inside the model there on the inside of the neck. And of course you can go over that with some sandpaper to make it nice and shiny. I'm not too terribly worried because we're not having to do much just due to the nature of the subject. And also there's a place on the underside of the neck that needs a little bit of work as well. And just a little bit of file work will smooth out those edges. Next, it's time to throw some primer on there. I'm using Vallejo Surface Primer. Gray, unfortunately, that's all I had. So as you can see here, gray on gray is maybe not the smartest way to go about it, but eh, that's all I had and I'll get some white or black next time. So the primed is on the left and the unprimed is on the right. You can definitely see a difference. And here's a nice built up coating of primer on the head. Time to clean the airbrush so we can get to the fun part. And if you look closely, I think one of those drops actually went in. Now let's throw some color on there. I'm using Vallejo Model Air Mahogany. And I'm gonna mix it with a little bit of Airbrush Flow Improver, which they say about one drop per 10 drops of paint is what you need. Uh, I haven't ventured too far from that. It seems to work pretty well, so I stick with it. Maybe I'll do an extra couple drops. And here you can actually see some paint going on for once. I'm just building it up very, very smoothly and slowly. and more and more airbrushing. This is a kind of a slow process. You don't want to cake it up. 
It's important to build up the paint slowly, especially at first. And time for the body. Let's speed this up just a little bit here. Don't forget to keep turning the model and make sure it's getting covered from every angle. Next up, let's use a little lighter color. This is Vallejo Buff, and it's the regular type of paint designed for painting with a brush. And this paint is a lot thicker, so you really need to thin it down if you're gonna try and spray it. I should have thinned it even more. I see a little bit of spitting going on, but we'll make do. With that same color loaded, I'm just going over the eyes and the mouth a little bit just to give it a little softer and lighter feel. It'll make it seem a little bit more, give it a little bit more character. And going over the top of the head which is kind of that inside bark look, so it should be a little bit lighter. Usually the inside of trees are lighter color and then the outside bark gets a little darker. Next up is some Tamiya Paneline Accent Color. This is dark brown. And you, if you'll notice, the, the model is now glossy. I sprayed it with a couple coats of just regular old can gloss. And the reason you want it glossy is so this, this color will just flow on. As this goes on, it's so thin that the horizontal print lines are making it bleed left and right, which is not exactly what we want, but we can work back and forth to achieve the look we're after. This panel line wash is really made for aircraft and tanks and those type of models to accent the panel lines, hence the name. But it works really well on other models wherever you wanna add some contrast. Just more applied to the back. You can really see that run down. It almost does all the work for you. And you just glob it on and as it dries, it'll stay in the crevices and you just kind of wipe off the excess. And to create even more contrast, let's hit it again with some black. Have to use this a little bit more sparingly. Moderation is the key.
using just a very light touch, you can move it around as, as needed. This is where the gloss coating of the model really makes things easier. You can work back and forth and just wipe off anything you don't like. If this had a matte coating, the texture would tend to grab the wash and hold it in place, so it, it makes it really hard to, to change later. This is really just kind of a build-up process. You do a little bit, you see how it looks, add some more, wipe it away, just until you get what you want. And I'm just using standard black here to paint the eyeballs. Again, this is the Vallejo model color. And let's add a little details to the to the eyes. I'm just kind of putting down some points of color. Um, I'll be layering the a few different colors, so it's not really critical how accurate it is. Ultimately, I'll kind of blend them all together here in a little bit. But a little bit of red, a little bit of yellow. And then moving on to a little bit darker red, kind of going over, and I don't have much paint on here. It's a little bit of dry brushing to kind of bleed all those colors together. So you, you still see a little bit of all the colors. And then we'll come back and go back over the pupil in just a moment to clean it up. with a steady hand and a good brush should be able to clean that eye back up and really define where you want the pupil to be I believe that was a zero brush if that matters to anybody and I like the little bit longer ones too because they tend to hold paint and I've got the these are acrylic paints. I've got a little bit of water in there to, to thin it down. Let's mix up some epoxy. And let's spread it on the eyes to make it real shiny. A paintbrush would definitely be easier here, but it's definitely a one-time use, so I'll just suffer through using a toothpick. It's kind of, if you take your time, you can kind of push it into the right areas. Just be really super careful. And the great thing about epoxy is it self-levels. So as long as you Mix it up well, get all the little air bubbles out. You should end up with a really nice glossy surface. I'm using five minute epoxy here. I've done this before, so I kind of have an idea of how it works. If you're worried about it, maybe try some 30 minute. Let's switch over to some green Vallejo paint now. And this is just the regular, regular Vallejo green. I think it's flat green. Um, and it's thinned down pretty well and we're just barely touching it 
with that same brush to get a little bit of green on there. This dries a little bit flatter and a little bit darker, so it's not going to be quite as bright. And time for some fast mask. And don't let the name fool you, it's not very fast. Um, started putting it on with a toothpick here. And very, very quickly decided to switch over to a paintbrush. What I'm doing here is just masking off the eyes so I can lay down that nice matte coating later. It would have probably made more sense to spray the matte before using the epoxy on the eyes, but sometimes I'm just not that smart. This is just liquid latex and it peels off really easily later. Now let's coat it with some matte varnish. We jumped ahead just a little bit here. This already has a pretty good matte coating applied. It really helps to smooth out the color and makes those ugly horizontal print lines way less apparent. Now let's get more of that buff color we used earlier and do some dry brushing. The trick is to load up the brush, wipe off as much excess as you can, and then just really just scrub it on there. This is not fast speed, this is 100%. Uh, you really just scrub it on. There's no real science to it. Just don't get too much on your brush. Let it build up naturally and let it catch on all those higher layers and then just do it a little at a time and change out the color and you'll get a nice finish. Let's go ahead and use that same dry brushing technique on the rest of the model. This is great not only for weathering a model, but it's also good for adding just some subtle details and variation. It works best to do it in layers with multiple colors, and it's kind of looking like I'm going to mess up some of those green vines in the process, but that's easy to fix later. Next up, let's just add some of those details back that got a little airbrushed away. This is just that same mahogany color, and with the other, as with the other paint, it dries a little darker and flatter, so it should blend in pretty well. And yes, those vine things got pretty much destroyed, so I'm having to go back and recoat them a little bit with some green, but no big deal. They're easy and they're fun. Next up, I'm just creating some really thin lines up and down the model to add more detail. I'm using a very, very thin paint. This is kind of a dark brown and it's pretty much all water. And I'm using that little bit long haired brush just to make sure it has a lot of, a lot of paint in it. Next up, we can go ahead and peel off the latex to reveal the gloss eyes. And just be careful, don't scratch them up. You'll have to do them again. And the other one, it's like pulling off sunburn. And there we have it, the finished Groot. Thank you guys for watching, and don't forget to like the video if you like it, and subscribe. And like the video if you don't like it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.